In this video, I'm not going to explain step-by-step step a specific problem, but instead I'm going to talk about something that can be confusing for a lot of people taking physics classes. This is something that actually confused me for a long time before I finally got it, so I'm hoping to clarify it for others as well. But anyone who's taking a physics class, especially one that's focused on forces, will almost certainly see this problem come up a lot, where we have a mass, or a block, sitting on an inclined plane with an angle theta. Now, there might be other forces acting on the block, like maybe there's like a cord pulling it back, like a pulley, or maybe there's like a frictional force at play. But something that is always going to be present in these types of problems is the gravitational force acting on the block, pointing downwards with a magnitude of mg, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. Now, in problems with inclined surfaces, it's usually very convenient to use a tilted coordinate system, uh, shown up here, where the axes are along the direction that the mass will actually be moving. It's only going to be moving along the surface of the incline, so it makes things much easier to have the axes along that direction. Most things are made much easier this way, but the one downside of it is that the gravitational force, which always points straight downwards, ends up getting broken into different coordinates because it's no longer straight along one axis. To rectify this, we usually use the expression mg times the cosine of theta for the magnitude of the force in the y direction, and then we use mg times the sine of theta for the magnitude of the force in the x direction. And this is the same theta as the angle of incline for the surface. Now something that might be confusing for a lot of people is memorizing or, or even just understanding these two expressions. Because even though they're kind of taken for granted, they are kind of counterintuitive. Because usually we're led to believe that when we have an angle, it's the cosine that's used for the x component and the sine that's used for the y component. Whereas this is kind of the other way around. So in this video, I'm going to try and explain where that comes from. For the explanation that I'm going to use, the only prerequisite knowledge that you need to have is that, the basic fact of triangles, that the sum of all three angles is equal to 180 degrees for any triangle. I've even written it down here. For any triangle, the sum of all three angles is 180 degrees. Now that's all we need to figure this out. So let's first break down this triangle into smaller parts. So to start off, let's say we've got an angle, and then there's a little box where our mass is, and the gravity is pointing straight downwards. Now right off the bat, there are a couple things that we want to notice about this. The first is that since the gravity is pointing straight down, this is a right angle, the angle between the force of gravity on the mass and the surface of the wedge, assuming it's horizontal, is a 90 degree angle. The second thing I want you to notice is that even if we can't see the rest of the incline, or even if the block is here and not necessarily on the top of the incline, this still functions as a right triangle. The combination of the tip of the wedge where the angle is and the downwards force can be thought of as being one complete triangle. So using the given fact that all the angles must add up to 180 degrees, We've used up 90 of those degrees right here, so this angle and this angle must add up to 90 degrees. So I'm going to write this angle as being equal to 90 degrees minus theta. So now if you were to add up all three of these angles, 90 minus theta plus theta plus the 90 degrees here, then you'll get 180 degrees. So th this works so far. So far this is pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to focus on the mass and the components of gravity acting on it. There's going to be one component this way, the x component using the, the tilted axis, and there's going to be another component along the surface of the wedge. Now as we established a moment ago, this angle right here is 90 degrees minus theta. But here's something that's interesting though. Because the component of gravity on the mass that is in the y direction is perpendicular to the surface of the wedge, then this angle 
is 90 degrees, which means that this angle must also be 90 degrees. So this angle right here plus this angle must add up to 90 degrees. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. That means that this angle right here is equal to theta. The angle between the downward gravitational force and the component of that force in the y direction on a tilted axis is equal to theta. These two angles are one and the same. And that is the most important thing to note about this. Because just from that, we can derive these two expressions fairly simply just using trigonometry. Let's say we've got the downward gravity, and then we've got the two components of it. There's the component in the y direction, and then the component in the x direction, which can also be shown being right here to make another right triangle where we can use our trigonometry. Just looking at this triangle alone, it's much more clear to see now that if we use the definitions of the sine and the cosine, uh, opposite over hypotenuse, then we can see much more clearly that this component along the x-axis is going to be equal to mg times the sine of theta, whereas this component along the y-axis is equal to the mg cos of theta. Cosine of theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So this component of the x-axis here is going to have the same magnitude as one up here, which is where this comes from. And now we have explained both of those vector components. And that is why these two expressions are true for the components of gravity on an inclined plane. I think both of these expressions are worth memorizing because of how commonly this inclined plane scenario comes up when you're looking at force physics problems. And you don't want to have to derive the angle thing every time. But if you forget it or you just don't want to memorize it, then understanding this intuition can help out a lot. I hope this explanation was clear. This is kind of a difficult thing, but it's important for anyone taking a physics class to understand this. So if there's anything unclear about this explanation, please comment down below and I'll do my best to help out. If you have a request for a future video or for something else you'd like me to explain, you may comment that as well, or alternatively, join my Discord server linked below. And you can always send me requests that way in, my little, uh, in the little channels there. But, uh, but that's it for now. And so I hope this helped you. And I hope you all have a lovely night. Bye-bye.